This video will discuss the object known as M1, more commonly called the Crab Nebula. It is the first entry in Messier's list of objects that are not comets that he uh, put together. There's 110 in the list now, but some are modern editions. Uh, you can see my other video on the Messier catalog for more details on that. But we have this object first observed in 1054 AD, uh, different uh, cultures recorded this, especially in China. There's uh, good records of uh, the appearance of the star. This is a uh, screenshot of the Stellarium uh, planetarium program for PCs, a free program, and uh, would, shows the local sky in China at 4.30 a.m. July 4th, 1054 AD, where this guest star appeared where there had been no visible star before, then uh, for I think it was a couple of years, this was observable during the night and uh, was also observable during the day for a, a briefer period, a much briefer period of time. Um, I don't read Chinese, but here is the record of the appearance of, uh, of this guest star. So later, uh, the explosion that occurred, the material is expanded outward uh, in 1844 now. This uh, drawing was made in a 36 inch diameter telescope. It is, this Crab Nebula is visible in uh, telescopes with a smaller diameter, um, though you won't get the details. Of course, the Hubble telescope will produce something like this. Uh, showing a lot of turbulence and showing different uh, uh, material, different locations, different stages of ionization, and uh, producing different wavelengths of light. Um, but this is a, oh, an amazing object that this has been expanding a little less than a thousand years and uh, 6,500 light years from the Earth. There is something called a pulsar at the center of this Crab Nebula. It's a rotating neutron star, and a little bit more on that uh, later. Here is a composite image where there are five different wavelengths that have been used to form an image uh, from the radio to the X-ray realm. And again, where the atoms have different uh, temperatures, different uh, energy levels, will get different emissions of uh, radiation. and because of copyright, I don't want to infringe on the creative work that's been done, but uh, you can see this step through the colors, this website. So please uh, take advantage of that and you know, pause the video and write down this uh, URL and you'll see um, a little more clearly where the material is that's producing the different wavelengths. Hubble Telescope, uh, this again as a short little GIF movie that you can uh, view and you can see the material move outward from the uh, the pulsar. So again there's a URL to uh, to take advantage of that. And Hubble took pictures from September 2005 to November 2005. Um, again showing there's a lot of activity inside the uh, the nebula. In the X-rays, the Chandra telescope that orbits, uh, you know, it's outside the Earth's atmosphere, uh, produce this image of uh, where the X-ray emission is coming from, and there's a jet of material from this pulsar, and again, active region that's been energized by the uh, uh, rotation of this this pulsar. The pulsar is a neutron star; it's a collapsed star after a supernova occurs. It, in some situations, a, a neutron star is formed. And this particular one is fairly young. It's rotating at 30 times per second, um, a young pulsar. This image is with visible light and the pulsar here. And again, I didn't want to infringe on creative uh, work here, but if you would go to this URL, you would find that this uh, visible light flashes and there's a more bright pulse and then dim and then a, a slightly brighter pulse and then dim and then back to the bright uh, pulsar 
uh, visible light image. Uh, it's reported that some people can see the uh, change in brightness at a telescope, although they must have unusual eye capabilities. It's 30 times a second is really faster than the eye can process for uh, changes. In this image, there are three uh, images that are being combined here, each with a different color. And over a, a total span of 10 years, the brownish area is where there has not been a lot of motion of the material. And then closer in, where it's more kind of a rainbow, uh, that's revealing that the material moved from one time to another. As the colors get spread out here, where the colors overlap each other in the more outer region. There's uh, uh, more activity towards the center. And this expansion, uh, the material is moving roughly you know, a little over a thousand kilometers per second. Um, and there's an astronomy picture of the day a website you could go to uh, get some more information on this. Right now, it's roughly 10 light years across. I can't really talk about diameter because it's not a sphere, but about 10 light years across. And they're very interesting uh, YouTube videos about the uh, expansion of the Crab Nebula. If you do a search, 50 years expansion Crab Nebula, uh, you would probably arrive at this URL or copy this down and go to this and watch a, a video of the expansion of the Crab Nebula. And then a very good one here where a person used the same equipment over many years and uh, put together a movie of the expansion. So very, very uh, useful and entertaining, I thought. If you'd like to see some other of my videos on physics and astronomy, um, they're indexed, annotated at these two websites. These are free websites, no registration. Uh, hopefully you can easily find a video that's useful to you. And if you do enjoy the videos, please subscribe to my YouTube channel.